Hey there, it's Brittany and I am back with the, G the July um, curated bead box. This one is called Seabed Secrets. Oh, that's an interesting color way for something that's supposed to be sea themed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look. I haven't looked at it until just now. Uh, this box is $20 including shipping and um, you get everything in the box. They have matching SKUs in their sister store, dollarbead.com. And you also get a finding starter kit, which has crimp beads, elastic, beading wire, memory wire, head pins, jump rings, ear wires, and lobster clasps. So let's take a look and then we'll make a project. Okay, so I'm just guessing that this is the 12 millimeter cinnamon jade style glass bead string. It's eight inches. I really like it because it's cool terracotta color and I love terracotta. It's one of my favorite colors. It's like a cinnamon color. But um, next we have a yellow gray duo style glass bead, 12 millimeter. That's pretty cool. That looks almost like serpentine, but you know, different. It's like the same colors as serpentine. We have 10 millimeter beige jasper gemstone bead, seven to eight inch string. That's pretty cool. Looks like, um, like almost like vanilla caramel ice cream look. <laughs> um, can you tell it's lunchtime? <laughs> um, then we have 10 millimeter olive duo style glass bead, seven to eight inch string. Oh, I'm sorry, six inch string. This is like the seabed of a pond <laughs> or a river, I feel like. Um, 10 millimeter ivory gemstone style glass beads, six inch string. Those are pretty, you know, I like crackle beads. Eight millimeter red brown marble style swirl glass bead, 16 inch string. I like those. Eight millimeter drizzled copper silver glass bead, 10 and a half inch string. So they say this is copper, but it looks brown to me. Six millimeter jungle marble swirl glass bead, 10 and a half inch string. I kind of like this colorway. It's mint, brown, and white. It's pretty cool. Number, or the next one is dark brown crackle glass bead. Then we have 16 millimeter jasper gemstone bead, three beads. These are heavy. Uh, I don't, these aren't Jasper, these are agate. There's no way this is Jasper. Dyed agate, but they're nice. There might be maybe a fleck of ja Jasper in each one, I don't know, but um, they're nice, I like them. They kind of remind me of a snake, that color, or snake eyes, I should say. Then we have um, a 22 by 16 millimeter seashell bead, approximately 12 beads. I'm really shocked to see these in here. These are nice little cowrie, cowrie shell beads. Those are nice. We'll have to do something. We'll make a bracelet with those, I think. And um, then we have a six millimeter metal spacer beads, eight beads. Oh, these are nice. I actually pulled some that look exactly like this out of my stash. Um, the other day and didn't end up using them but I'll just put those in with those and then we have a 60 by 46 millimeter starfish metal, silver metal pendant that's cute I haven't seen a starfish that looks like that before that's super cute and then we have the silver findings pack this month oh that one's like severely tarnished that um, clasp right there it's like black on the top but i like it i like the you know it, it i don't know that i would have thought seabed from this colorway but i like these beads um these beads and these a lot um i really do like these i want to make a bracelet with those and this is a cute little pendant so let me ruminate for a little while and um, we'll come back and make some. Okay, so I went shopping in my bead room <laughs> to go with um, the beads that I wanted to use from the kit. So um, from this box, I wanna use these shells, um, these orange beads or orange cinnamony beads are just so pretty. Um, possibly these beads, cause they're the right color and possibly these beads and the pendant. I really wish this pendant was brass, but we're gonna go with silver today. 
I just immediately when I saw these colors together, I was like, oh my gosh, what if we do like a sandy, beachy, African y coastal look? So I got out some other things. I got out like three different types of brown cord. Because I, I think I'm going to make a bracelet and a necklace. Um, this is wax linen. This said wax linen it is not um, on the amazon listing and then this is one millimeter um, leather and then i brought over a bunch of beads that i thought may coordinate i, I don't know so these are african glass um I, i'm looking for these silver beads uh that's coin metal i think these are bone or they could be faux bone um some more African glass. I don't. I just. I don't know. I was just pulling bunches of stuff out because I was like so excited. Some more bone, um, some batik bone and metal beads, and then um, some metal beads that I just got. Well, not just, but recently got from Nina, and some more African glass because I was looking for. I was actually looking for this shape in bone and I guess I don't have it because I keep thinking like oh it's so generic I shouldn't get that shape in bone <laughs> past Brittany was a fool <laughs> and then um these I got these in Tucson this year so I don't know I'm not going to use all this but I just really was feeling it when I was going through my stuff and it started with these core beads from the um the box from the curated bead box so I'm super excited I just kind of want to want to um i don't know just just experiment um i'm gonna sh i think for the necklace i'm gonna use this cord if the beads fit on this cord now that i think about it okay so my dog's really weird <laughs> she now will she hates eating out of her bowl because her um little tag on her collar like her name tag <laughs> will hit the bowl and it scares her. She doesn't like loud noises. So now like I dumped a little bit of her food out and she's just like pawing at it, trying to get it away from the bowl so she doesn't have to touch the bowl. Like, come on, Goldie. So weird. Anyway, sorry, sorry. We know we don't just talk about jewelry on this channel. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm gonna open this up. Maybe I'll use this for the bracelet too, just because I want, I, I, I like always wanna use leather, but then leather's way more expensive than this. Not that it's like super duper expensive, but if I'm gonna get the same effect, cheap, more cheaply, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, um, I don't know, I don't know. I think maybe we'll do a knot, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking we're gonna do some, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not using full sentences. I'm thinking and designing in the head at the same time. And it's difficult sometimes. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull off a bunch of this cord and I just cut two long um, two long pieces. So I'm gonna grab my, my star fish. Pull that down to the middle. And I'm just gonna do an overhand knot here. Making sure to bring that all the way down to the loop on the star. Okay, we've got our, we've made a bail. I don't need to get out a jump ring. It's more rustic this way. Um, and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna do what I want. <laughs> so let's cut open some of these beads. I'm in a funky mood. It's been a very stressful, stressful day at work today. Um, last, the last few, last week was really stressful too. It's just, so I'm in a funky mood. I'm pl I wanna be playful and just have fun making this necklace. Right? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And then hopefully teach you something along the way. I will be having a giveaway soon. I've, um, I've just got so many um, extra beads that I know I won't use um, from projects. And so it's, I'm gonna have a, uh, I'm gonna call it a um, bead soup giveaway and it's gonna be amazing. I've already started pulling stuff out for it. Um, I, although on, on YouTube, I no longer call giveaways giveaways because 
there are scammers and I've had people pay scammers because they thought I asked them for money and I would never ever do that for you unless I'm selling something on my bead group on Facebook. It will never ask you for money for shipping to ship you a prize. So um, that's why I never say that they're uh, giveaways anymore. So just be on the lookout. Those of you who watch every video, I love you so much. Thank you. And just be on the lookout for something um, that might look like it's a giveaway. <laughs> Sometimes I put special surprise in the, t in the title or something like that. Maybe I'll title it Bead Soup Special Surprise or something. All right. I I'm sorry I'm rambling. I'm just designing and talking at the same time. So I think I'm going to start... Let's start with, I don't think two of these are gonna fit through my bone beads, but we'll see. Would you look at that? Okay, I like that. Oh, I love that orange with the cream and it's going to fit in with our cinnamon color beads. This is going to be a special, special little necklace, I think. All right, I'm going to do like two or three of these. I think I'm going to do two and then I'm going to come up. Oh, please. Yeah, this will fit through. Just need one piece to fit through. There we go. So here I'm gonna do a knot. Pretty loose knot because I didn't I want these to be able to move around a little bit. So it's not, I don't want them, I like, I like the movement. I like fidgeting a lot with my beads while I'm wearing necklaces. Put on my orange bead. Pull that baby down there and then I am going to go ahead and not. that orange bead in place. Love it. I, I'm just already loving the rustic, rustic look. And then I think yeah, I'm going to do that same. I'm going to do two more of those bone beads. I'm going to do two more of my orange and cream beads, but I'm going to turn the orange towards the bone beads. So like it is here, but I'm going to flip them back there. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And then, um, I yes, just love it. It's so beachy. And then I'm going to take one of my cowrie shells. And I'm going to come through the back 
with one of my pieces. And actually, you know what? I lied. I'm going to go ahead and knot it again very loosely here. This necklace is going to come together super quickly because it's just knotting to keep things in place. And I'll just have to figure out what I want on the back as a clasp or a closure. Okay, so then I'm going to take one piece, come through the front, okay, holding that, and then I'm going to take the other piece, come through the back, and then we're going to slide that down to our knot, and that's going to hold my shell in place just like that and then I'm going to knot it again pretty tightly not loose um, not loosely like we did with the orange and bone beads okay so I'm going to try and walk that knot as closely as I can down to that shell so we're holding it in place isn't that so cool look at this so far it's like coming in Ah, it looks great. It looks I'm great. I'm gonna put one that has crackle on it. I am gonna put on this bead, lock it in place with a knot. do two more of these uh, stars or flowers or whatever they are. I think this is where I might put in that metal bead. And don't forget, we're going to make a bracelet too. Bracelet's going to be pretty simple. I kind of just want it to be the cowrie shells. Hopefully I can get, this is a hollow bead, so it might be a little difficult to get this to go straight through. Might be surprised and let, it might work right away. Nope. So you really got to aim it correctly and it's not very stiff cord. Miracle. It's a bead miracle. Okay, and then I'm going to knot that in place. And do those two flowers again. And then another crackle. I think <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I don't know if I have enough cord to do this all over again. It's gonna be really tight if I try and do this um, pattern again, but I'm gonna try it. I think we're gonna go ahead and do another shell and then I'm going to do that same orange um, and cream pattern 
after it. All right, I'm gonna finish this side up, do the exact same thing on the other side, and then we'll finish the necklace off. This necklace is one of my new favorites. It's so beachy and coastal, and I just love it. <laughs> I just love it. So um, we're gonna finish off the back, and then I have ideas for um, two bracelets um, to go with it. Um, so I haven't really decided. I, I got out a bunch of clasps. So I'm just gonna do this generic one for the back because I'm not gonna see it. Um, and then I'm just going to tie it on like it was a bead. like that and then I will knot this again and I have some DS hypo cement around and we'll dot the the cords with some glue so it is not gonna go anywhere go and you know what do I have any tiny beads you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this on for a second because I think I have a bead that I want to tie on the ends of that I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side there are literally so many ways that you can close this this is the easiest one I have right now it's 9 p.m. <laughs> I've had a very long and very stressful day so just doing something easy and secure. Okay, so we've got that on there. I'm gonna do one more knot. real tight so I had out these brass there I know they're silver but they're brass beads um, from a different project that I didn't end up using them on and they're perfect for the end of these cords That a little bit right there. And I'll do that on each one of these four cords. Super cute, super cute. Okay, and then I'm just gonna dot my glue and so oh, got a mess on our hands. Inside this knot. And that's not gonna go anywhere. I will do the other side. And of course, I'll include photos of the, the project at the end. Okay, here is the finished product. These go that way. So cute. And then, 
Again, an extra thread there. Just some cute little details in the back if you're wearing your hair up. So fun and easy. This was so easy and relaxing to make and you can make a ton of these because there are so many beads left in the kit. And that's the thing I like to show is, you know, make it your own by adding in things in your stash if you'd like. It doesn't always have to be, I made, I got a box that can only use stuff from that box. It coordinates with your personal style. So, all right, we're gonna move on to a bracelet. Um, I'm just gonna do a fast one using, where did it go, this TerraCast. Um, toggle and this uh, really pretty bead and then I'm going to use the, the, the rest of the cinnamon beads. Well, maybe not even the rest because there are quite a few left, but I also have these African brass spacers that are also like bead caps. Got out my 19 strand. Um, oh, well, I have my 19, this is what is on the table, but you, their wire did come in the kit. So if you wanna use the wire in the kit, totally acceptable. It's, it's very, I've used it for bracelets that um, are still to this day really great. Um, the issue we're gonna have is toggle needs to be able to come through our, um, our loop and these beads are quite large. So um, I might get some more of those African, those little squares and put them on the end um, once we get to, actually, let's just start. Okay, I'm just gonna put three on either side of the bracelet. It's gonna be beautiful and fast. All right, so I'm gonna start by opening up some of these bead caps and I'm going to put one on every, or either side of my orange bead. And once I get halfway, I'll put on um, the, once I get halfway, I'll put on this metal bead. And it's gonna look like, well, it's, it is a designer <laughs> bracelet because I've designed it for myself, but it's gonna look like a, a really high-end bracelet just by adding components in from your bead stash. See, isn't that pretty? Make it really elevates the that glass bead. Okay, so I have my really beautiful bracelet that's not just gonna go with this set, it's gonna go with pretty much everything I own because this is very neutral. I'm just gonna grab some bead uh, crimp beads. These are a little brighter than I wanna use, but it's what I have on hand. And then I am gonna crimp on to my clasps or clasp that on grab toggle make sure that's not twisted like it is or crossed over each other like it is And then we're going to squish. We're going to turn 90 degrees and squish again. And then one more time. I am going to come through several of these beads. Oh, I got to be careful because I'm almost losing my beads on the other side. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. And I'm going to trim before I close my bracelet and then move everything down and come through my loop on my other half of my toggle. And then I'm gonna pull 
that through a few of these beads. And then I'm gonna grab my uh, tail, grab my clasp and pull. So everything's pretty. Oh, you know what happened? These are very large whole beads, which is gonna be to our advantage on one side because you, then you won't see the crimp, but on, on this side, I can't see the crimp enough to actually crimp my bracelet. So that's gonna be a little bit of trouble. I just have to find the crimp. All right, so in that first one and try and get it out of there. There we go. I'm gonna hold that back here a little bit. Do that exact same thing, but make sure I keep my fingernails around it so I can prevent it from going into my large hole beads. That was interesting, I forgot about that. So there is gonna be some slack in this bracelet because what went, what's gonna end up happening is these are gonna move down over that bead unless I put a crimp cover on and I'm not gonna do that. So it's not gonna be perfect, but you know what, this is actually a situation where we can do it in a straight line because that will, it's, it's gonna have extra slack no matter what. So now I can keep my bracelet in a straight line and pull as tightly as I want because no matter what, it's not going to be tight to the point that it'll snap later. Usually I say loosey goosey, but not in this instance. Okay, so I'm holding that with my, oh, did I lose them again? I did. That. I'm gonna flat crimp here because this is very tricky with getting uh, my pliers in there. Just flat crimp the sides, totally fine. And that actually might prevent the square bead from coming over it, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to come in here and try folding it now. There we go. Turn it. It's just a little bit more work, but it's worth it. Snip this wire. As you can see, there's already a little bit of a gap, but it's okay. Because once it's on, nobody's gonna be able to see that. But look at this, isn't that a gorgeous bracelet? I know it's um, very, very, it's not plain, but very simple. But that's my style most of the time. I love wearing things that can go with multiple outfits. And then we're gonna make another bracelet using the shells. I'm gonna put this one on. There we go. Love it, love it. And then I'm gonna grab my shells. I don't know, one broke, which one is it? I don't think it really matters. As long as it's not too rough on my wrist, that's fine. I am going to figure out which, I was gonna originally make the clasp one of the shells, but I think I'm gonna use one of these buttons. I brought over three of them. So I have a starfish, because I have a starfish on the necklace. But I feel like maybe, maybe, maybe. I love this little tiny shell, but it's gonna get lost with how big those shells are. And then I have a sand dollar. I think I'm gonna go with the sand dollar. I think it just goes well with everything. Even though it's a little more generic than the other shapes, I like it. All right, I'm gonna grab some more of this cord and I'm gonna load on my button. Bring that to the center. We're just gonna do that same process that we did on the necklace with the shells. Okay, so we have our button. Uh, let's see, so I don't know if this is gonna be long enough. I think we should be okay. I'm going to take my shell and put one cord in the front. 
one cord through the back and then we will pull them both tight have that shell right up against that knot and then we're gonna knot here and I am just going to repeat that until it's long enough or I run out of shells Here we go, cute. Okay, this came together in no time at all. It's so cute, super summery, perfect friendship bracelet too. And you could put um, beads in the middle of each one of these shells if you'd like. I just really wanted it to be super simple and neutral so I can wear it with a lot of stuff. Um, to end it, just gonna do um, a measurement of my button here uh, between two pieces of, or the two pieces of cord to see how wide it needs to be. So I'm gonna do another knot right there. And before I lock that knot in place, I'm gonna make sure it's not too big or too small for my button. Park your button there and then tighten that knot. And I'm gonna make this adjustable by just doing one more of these spaces on the other side, right here. So I'll take my perfect, uh, this, is, this method's perfect for if you're selling at um, fairs or something, um, you don't know your customer's wrist length or width and you can just sell something that typically wouldn't feel adjustable, but make it adjustable in this case. Okay, got that. And then I still have some of these guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and slip Slip two on each one, I think. So now all three pieces have at least one bead in common, which is um, this square spacer. And there we go, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love all three of these pieces. And uh, I mean, sometimes I make jewelry and I, I love every piece, but in its own way, but this is something that I'm gonna use for years, for sure. And um, it's neutral and perfect and classic, right? So thanks for watching. We made two bracelets and this awesome knotted necklace. So if you're interested in curated bead box, check out the link below. Um, you can save 35% off of your first box by using coupon code TURQST35. And uh, let me know what you think. What was your favorite part? And stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Bye-bye.